Well, despite guarantees that President Joko Widodo had announced last year, intimidation and threats to journalists in Papua still occur. It was not only done by the military, but also by local civilians. Meanwhile, in Jakarta, a female journalist hid for a week after receiving threats and online intimidation by the Islamic Defender Front, or the FPI. Several journalists have been intimidated and threatened while covering the rerun election in the Mamera Moraya Regency in Papua. Rifando Nai, an RCTI contributor in Papua, was threatened by a group of men armed with bows, arrows, and matchets at the Kampung Funawan polling station on Thursday. His camera was also confiscated. Rifando was forced to remain inside his house as the armed men continued to mill around outside. On Saturday, he was picked up from Kampung Fona by a helicopter and transported to Kaswan Werja, the capital of Mambra Moraya Regency. To MNC World News, Rifando said that two members of the police mobile brigade witnessed the incident during which the people blocked him and seized his camera, but they did not do anything. A Papua Post journalist, Gultom Pangaribuan, said he and 10 other people were taken hostage at the Kampung Fona 2 polling station. He said there were two Mamura Moraya police officers at the polling station, but they were too afraid to take action. In Jakarta, Indonesian journalist Fabriana Ferda was hit for a week after a flood of threats of violence from the militant group in social media. Febriana writes for Rappler, an online news portal based in Manila, the Philippines, owned by former CNN respected journalist Maria Reza. The threats follow her expulsion from last June meeting of militant Islamists and former senior military officials, all of whom fiercely opposed Indonesia's tentative steps toward accountability for the 1965 anti communist massacres. The Twitter account of the Islamic Defenders Front, or FBI, accused Rappler and Febriana of being pro-communist. Other social media users then also accused Rappler of being pro-LGBT. Indonesia's President Joko Widodo should make clear to the FBI and others that his government won't tolerate such threats to media freedom. Until he does, reporters such as Febriana Firdaus and Rifando Nai will be at risk for merely doing their jobs. And to talk to us more about this, we have with us Pa Andreas Harsono, who is a former journalist and researcher at the Human Rights Watch. Pa, thank you so much for coming. Now, this recent incident in Papua, um, despite President Joko Widodo guaranteeing the safety of journalists over there, and also foreign media can go there, they keep on getting threatened. Uh, journalists in Papua. What's your opinion on this? The situation in Papua is very complex. Mm. There are so many self-interest, business interests within the military, within the police, within intelligence community there, and also local official. Okay. It is so complex, and also journalists are there poorly paid, and they can easily be bribed. And the trust uh, among native Papuan on Indonesian media is pretty low. That's why they are so hostile against Indonesian journalists in Papua. Right, but President Joko Widodo, uh, he said that he wants uh, more people to cover Papua, yeah. and he wants foreign media to go there, but they keep on getting threatened, so they're not being protected. The, the reality on the grounds is foreign journalists are still restricted to go to Papua, okay, despite, so okay. despite President Joko order that they should be you know, free, like they are going to Bali or going to Bandung, mm -hmm. they're also free to go to Papua, but until now, Jakarta-based foreign journalists mm -hmm. are still restricted, are still required to apply for Surat Jalan yeah. if they want to go to Papua. So things are not getting better. Right, but uh, local media are allowed to go there. And th in this recent case, uh, uh, from, uh, f from a local media station, uh, was, uh, was reporting on an election yeah. that he got threatened. And it's been yeah. happening every single oh, year. So not every single year. Every month, every, right. every other week, there is a threat against either Indonesian journalists or Papuan journalists. Right, it so happened. Is this right? It is wrong, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I suggest the press council to meet President Jokowi and to discuss this. I also repeatedly told President Jokowi to issue a special presidential decree on journalism, on free media right. in Papua, to increase the quality of journalism in Papua. Because I believe uh, the quality of journalism is it is going to be better for the society. Mm -hmm. But if the journalism is getting uh, lower, mm -hmm. then the, the society is also getting lower.
Right, because um, they're not being protected. Uh, in, in, in this case, um, th there was police present at the time when he was being threatened, but the police are too scared to protect him. Well, that's what happened every, every now and then. Right. Uh, in, in your case, these journalists were threatened by indigenous Papuan. Mm. But in many other cases, they were also threatened by the military and the police. Okay, right. Uh, so there, there was a law passed, uh, uh, the number 40, 1999 law that uh, supposedly protects uh, Indonesian journalists and... Um, I was involved in writing that law. Right, yeah. right. And they, they have the right to report fairly and balanced. Yep. But they still get threatened, uh, you know... Because at the same that. time, while we passed that very good law on media freedom, 1999, mm -hmm. But since 1999 until now, there are hundreds and hundreds new articles in various laws, internet law, pornography law, mm -hmm. local election law, presidential law, everything, uh, which criminalize uh, free speech. And the police and the, uh, the prosecutors and many other people do that, use, misuse that article mm -hmm. to prosecute not only journalists, but also social media users. At the same time, we have a boom of cell phone that's why more and more people are prosecuted you know using facebook twitter maybe saying bad thing about their neighbor or their region or local After officials of got arrested so you're saying these uh, uh laws of uh, laws of defamation are restricting the freedom of press uh, the freedom of speech yes. in indonesia yes. now now since when were these uh these laws against uh defamation created? mostly under uh, president yudhoyono mm. mostly under president yudhoyono but lately, under President Jokowi, we also have uh, seen an increase of intimidation, harassment, and, and arrest against anyone who talk about 1965. Okay. Okay, now let's, let's step back a bit. Um, it's, it's a different time from the Suharto administration when maybe the press was not so free. Now, now the press are more uh, free to say what they want, but the... Uh, do you think in, uh, Indonesian journalists um, are safe from risk now? Oh, it is, it is much better. How is the situation in the, in the past decade? It, during the Suharto era, mm. if you want to publish a newspaper, you have to get a license, right. and your license can be revoked. In a bit to get a license, you get to have uh, a license for your chief editor, a license for your publisher, a license from the local uh, journalist association, the local publisher, so there are so many, from the police, from right. the military, etc., etc. Of course, those licensing are gone now. Uh, it is uh, about business, setting up a business. You have to get up a license just for your business. So in that case, uh, it is much freer today. Right. But over the last 15 years, we are seeing more and more articles discriminating free speech. Right, so it's, it's gotten worse. Uh, not w as worse as the Suharto era, not as bad as the Suharto era, but mm -hmm. it is getting worse. The best uh, after the fall of Suharto was under President Abdurrahman Wahid. Okay. And uh, apart from this case uh, in Papua, there's also a separate case where a journalist named Fabriana Firdaus um, was, uh, was expelled and uh, got threatened um, for, for writing uh, some Inti on Intimidated, not yeah, threatened, right. intimidation. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's true. It is also another bad indicator regarding this 1965 mm -hmm. because Fabriana was there to cover things related to 1965 massacre. But again, she is not the only one. Over the last two years, from Ubud Writers Festival to film showing of Joshua Oppenheimer films, The Act mm -hmm. of Killing or The Look of Silence, uh, or someone who used a T-shirt saying PKI, but not Partai Komunis Indonesia, but Pecinta Kaos Indonesia, got arrested in Ternate. So those kind of things happening over the last two years. Right, and is, is this a uh, threat against journalism? Is it uh, simply uh, because of uh, political reasons um, I think it is simply military. because people who were involved uh -huh. in the killing in the mass killing directly or indirectly are nervous with President Jokowi trying to resolve past human rights abuses that's why they make a lot of fuss saying that there is a rise of communism which is nonsense mm -hmm. or uh, a lot of things uh, making nonsense doing this, this so-called Bela Negara okay. uh, at the same time threatening intimidating anyone who would like to challenge their, their stance on 1965. Now, what, what is the government doing about this? Because, uh, President, because th there was a law that was written to protect journalists and President Joko Widodo is trying to guarantee safety, but it seems like they keep on getting threatened and intimidated. Now, what is the government, in this case in Fabriana, has the government done anything to protect her? 
Uh, she was intimidated. Uh, right. She is not threatened. Okay. So I think what the government did was well nothing because there was no no crime yet. If mm -hmm. unless she wants to say that, you know, this front pembela Islam doing something nasty, and then the police might act against them. But again, it was it was an intimidation. Right. It was an intimidation. This is this is not a threat. Uh, but there are more serious cases like being arrested mm -hmm. or uh, film screening being dismissed, discussion being dismissed. Those are serious, and I think the police is not doing enough to protect free speech, freedom of expression in Indonesia. Right, and uh, I guess my next question is, journalists in Indonesia, if they get threatened, if they get intimidated, their freedom of sp uh, speech is threatened, do they have anywhere to go? Anywhere oh yeah, to report, a lot, police? a lot. Mm -hmm. First, they can ask legal assistance from LBH PERS, okay. a press legal aid institute. They can also report to the journalist union, whether it is uh, broadcaster journalist union or uh, print journalist union alliance of independent journalists uh, Indonesian Journalist Association uh, there are a lot of organizations which are ready to help these journalists at the same time there are human rights organizations which are also ready to help uh, people who are criminalized for their free speech okay uh, and now uh, on to our last question um, Indonesia how do we compare in our freedom of speech and freedom of journalists uh, with neighboring countries, maybe such as Singapore and Malaysia? Well, there are some uh, indicators, uh, especially made by Reporter Sang Frontier based in uh, France. Uh, in Southeast Asia, Indonesia is probably number one or number two. We are on par with the Philippines. Uh, Singapore is problematic because Singapore media have difficulties to cover their domestic uh, right. problems, although it is increasingly getting better. But we are still having uh, worse cases like in Malaysia or Thailand under the military law mm. now, dictatorship. Uh, Cambodia is also another problem. Uh, don't say about Vietnam, Laos, uh, Brunei is another uh, low category in mm. Southeast Asia. So basically, Indonesia and the Philippines are still uh, the best in, 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 in Southeast Asia. Although I have to take a note that violence against journalists in the Philippines is worse than in Indonesia. Right. So even though we have our issues, um, yeah. it's not as bad. In the Philippines, they are yeah. being killed. Right. Okay, but thank you so much for thank your views you. and thank you so much for coming. Thanks. Thank you. And coming up next, Muslim travelers now can choose to stay at Sharia hotels, which are available in popular cities in Indonesia. We'll be right back.